Hello everybody, Floyd here again. Welcome back to the asylum. I'm still messing around with this old Yamaha. I've been doing some riding and stuff. It's still got a lot of little things wrong with it. I got it cleaned up pretty decently. But today I'm going to take care of a problem that it's had that's not really a huge problem, but the high and low beam switch is broken off over here. I've got a unit, complete unit that I purchased off of eBay. The seller said that it was untested. So we're going to test that out today. And if everything's good, we're going to install it. So hang with me, we'll get it done. There's a lot of different ways I can test this new set of switches out here. But I'm just going to pull the headlight out and plug them into the bike and then start it. And I can test them that way. I believe I need to replace one of these screws. It's a little chewed up looking. Not a huge deal, but this is a bike for me that when I'm done, the appearances of it will be important. Now we just have to locate the plugs that match these. Which are right here. I could just switch the bike on and test everything except for the fact that I am running a battery eliminator circuit on this bike. I've got no battery in this motorcycle. So the only way to have electricity is to have the engine running. If I can locate the turn signal wires, I may test those out with a test light just to see. But first, let's crank the old thing up and check the headlight switches and the horn. Bring it up on the compression stroke. Release the compression lever. And kick. Don't be shy about kicking these things. They need a good, hard prod to get going. First, let's test the reason why I bought this switch. It might work. Right back to the video. 
Well, I guess before I get too carried away, I should also test, crank it back up and test the turn signals just in case. I'm planning on putting turn signals back on the bike, just not factory turn signals. Of course, I realized after I bought this used factory unit off of eBay, that for about the same price, I could have gotten a new one from TheVintageSpoke.com. Oh well, you live and learn. Since originality isn't that important to me, I would have gone that route. Ouch! Well, it turns out the only thing that's actually working on my replacement switch that I bought is the headlight switch. So I'm going to pause the video and see what's involved and see what's involved in swapping these out from one box to the other. And then we'll do this again. I will just put the headlight switch in here. Well here, you can see I was able to remove the switch from the donor part. I've got it here, notice it's got a spring-loaded detente ball in there, so you have to make sure you hang on to that ball, the spring, and the little copper piece that goes on the back side. If you lose any of those, then your switch is instantly rendered useless for anything. Now here we're looking at the original switch housing on the motorcycle and here is where that plastic headlight switch piece is that's broken and it's held in by these two screws and then friction so I'm going to attempt to get that out without disturbing this bake light piece this black plastic piece that has the other contacts on It came right out on the donor part. Now hopefully it will work on our patient.
The other one wasn't broken, so I was able to push it right out. But I have to reach into the slot here for this one. And very carefully wiggle it up. Push it on out. Once again, holding on to the ball in the spring. You can see the contact plate came up. That's not a huge deal. We will put it back in before we get started. And of course, the only thing that's wrong with this one is the handle broke off the front. Put this back down in there. Where it goes. And this contact plate. Hopefully it will all slide back into place without too much rigmarole. Okay, let's put the retainers back in place now. Sure we don't pinch any wires. Okay, slide it back into place under here. It takes a little bit of wiggling to get it on past the decompression lever and the grips. One thing I'll have to show you, off camera I gave these screws a couple of seconds hits with the buffer. If you don't have a buffer and you're working on these old bikes, I really recommend you get one. Especially if you're doing things where looks really matter. It's so nice to be able to polish things up. Eventually I'll be tearing this bike completely apart and doing the cosmetics on it, new paint and everything. But that's still a little ways to go yet. Now we can put the handlebar button in place. 
put the screw through it. You don't have to over tighten any of this stuff because it is plastic after all. You don't want to break it. Make sure it's securely run in. Go ahead and stick the headlight back in place now. I'm definitely going to replace this one screw later. But for now, it will serve the purpose. One of these screws I would already replaced because when I purchased this bike it was missing a lot of screws and fasteners. There were a lot of things loose. I should have started documenting this along and along as I went. Instead I waited till I've got, I had it running before I decided to bring everybody else in on it. It was just me more worried about having a bike I wanted than about becoming YouTube fodder. I had kind of gotten away from all this stuff and started not to do it anymore. Of course, you know it never fails. I'm struggling with the thing, so I stopped the camera and moved the tripod so I can get down here and see what's going on. And then it snaps right into place. Yeehaw. That's the way it goes sometimes. Let me put the other side in. This chrome trim piece has popped loose around the bottom of the headlight. I'll have to address that later. Right at this point, I'm kind of running out of time to work on motorcycles for today, or at least work on this one. Of course, anytime you do any type of work, especially electrical work, you always need to come back and check the function just to make sure, especially when you're patching old parts together. You really do need to make sure that you've got everything like it's supposed to be. too when you rev it up on the center stand. Anyhow, I'm not sure if it'll be the next episode or the one after that. I've got the stock carburetor. The air box was missing from this machine when I got it. So I replaced the stock carburetor with a VM36 McEwen. It came pre-jetted for a slightly modified SR500. This one is bone stock other than the carburetor and the uni filler. I have a brand new in the box exhaust system that we're going to put on it. And if you go back and watch my exhaust system install on my Royal Enfield, I'm going to do something similar to that. And I may actually check the difference in the decibel level 
But what I plan to do is to install an air fuel ratio gauge into the exhaust pipe. And then we're going to see how much of a difference there is in the air fuel ratio when you change to a freer flowing exhaust. Right now this thing is running pig rich. You have to let it get good and warm before you try to rev it up. And it makes it a little hard to start sometimes. And I have not bothered to set any the air fuel screw, or in the case of the McCuny, it's a fuel screw. I haven't tried to tune any of that. It's on here strictly straight out of the box. So I'm going to change the exhaust system. I'm going well, actually I'm going to install the AFR gauge. I have one here that I use for tuning into the head pipe. And we're going to check the air fuel ratio with the stock exhaust. And then we're going to change the exhaust and see how much that affects it. But that's it for this episode. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, keep riding and stay crazy.